Welcome back, everyone. Here we are, game number two of VG Gaming versus TNC. And we already got a draft for you, my friends. Oh. Right down there, nice and quick. You guys bro broke it down early in that last panel, but guess what we got in that first pick? Yeah. Well, yeah. We, we, we said it, You're didn't up we? one game. Yeah. You're feeling the Earthshaker Morphling right now. Try it. And even, like, VG Gaming still is an awkward position, right? Because you have to draft like you're going to get a Morphling, right? Yes. It could be Do the mind pick games. Ancient Apparition, but it's just an Earthshaker opening? That's going to feel Jet really bad if they yeah. don't pick Morph, right? Yeah. There's still Kunkka out there in the pool. Man. There is still no Void. So TNC, they they oh. banning away the Void, right? So that means they don't have to pick up a defensive offlaner, which I like to see if they do go the Earthshaker Morphling. I will say, were you surprised last series when IG tried to run that AA in a three instead of just a five, right? Because that felt like a very whisper thing on Beast Coast. And then like yeah. you're like, oh, that worked. But most AA oh, players Mac are fives. A. Oh, so we are getting all of them, huh? We're yeah. getting the mag strats, the Earthshaker, possibly Morphling. They didn't insta pick it. Yeah, surprised. they're thinking. They're thinking. Are they gonna? You might as well talk about it. Talk about your bands as well. Nah, if you have the nah, action. nah, nah. Catch you got shut 20 the hell seconds up. before your reserve that, time. Smash that pick button. Uh, uh, you, mag PA is a lot better than Mag Juggernaut against yep. Earthshaker uh, Morph because you have a lot faster burst damage. You're gonna build it into an Abyssal Blade. You have instant uh, gap <laughs> close, so you're gonna feel good about that. Um, it's also a lineup that hasn't overcommitted because you're going to be happy. Like, you're going to feel okay about a mag lineup with PA anyway, right? But Even if they didn't more play, which I'm sure they would have almost no matter what. Yeah. But yeah. Like but, the, the, but the thing is, right, so. Oh, they banned the puck. I like that because that was one of the heroes, right, that, that did cause issues for them when they did it before. It right? controls the ES slash more it's real yeah, well. The it's coil is one of it's those It's spells. pretty infuriating to play against when. Especially when you're that low, just being tripped up by the silence. I think it was in that game yeah, as well yeah. where we saw like Gabby was dying in lane uh, because of how well Yang was playing the puck. So. Yeah, like a level four. Yeah, that was a real, yeah. that was a real good puck game. A little sus play on the other side, but man, these openings. It's it's funny. You're like, which opening do you like better? You have you know, OS Frog's greatest creation on one side, and <laughs> then a Mac on the other side, which it can make any hero, any melee yeah, hero truly look good. And, 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 and as Cap said, like this this is the best mag combo at the moment. I, I like this much more than Jug, jug Mag. I think P, PA Mag is, it's the top tier. To it's quicker, it's, it's faster paced, right? And we keep talking about having a faster paced lineup is never bad. Like you want to be able to move, get towers early. So Kunkka and Ancient Apparition were the two like morphling, counter morphling heroes that were still left in the pool. They left out the Ancient Apparition. Uh, I think Winter Wyvern is still out there for TNC to pick up against the Mag PA lineup, but um, I'm not like super <laughs> confident about it being able to counter PA. I just I, th I think at this point you just want to, if you're TNC, grab those heroes that are going to help keep them off safe. You know, yeah. you are looking at those those KP heroes that, well, pretty much all the three big ones are still there, right? The the Abbas, the Omnis, the Legions. Anything that's yep. going to be able to buff up keep them more safe from, from being burst low. So in, in particular, the Abaddon and the Omni. And of course, as we've seen in the previous attempts when they go for it, they do like to grab the Abaddon, so. Yeah, Omni is going to be the ban. Yeah. I think Legion is still okay, but it's more of a, an offensive hero, right? It's not it going to be as good of a save, but your blade mail pickup feels really nice against PA. Man, and we you see finally only the Omni, the, the one of the three you guys talked about that the spell is going to go away. And Lich on the other side. Oh, yes, there we see the C-tier Magnus hero Ayy. getting a first pick. Shout Ooh, out to Yannis guessed. for trying to defend Wait, wasn't Yannis Mag? the one who made yes. the tier list? No, he, he no, was, he was he with tried us on the Mag. Okay. He tried to defend oh, right, the Mag. Okay. He tried. <laughs> <laughs> there we see the crowd. Well, Tsunami's point would be would, would come back if VG Gaming lose this game. That would be that would be his rebuttal. Yeah, if the if one of the teams Which they in the may grand just do finals so. loses <laughs> the they game, they may just lose this Bad. game. Bad. I mean, I'm not saying I agree with yeah. it, but no, I know, I know. So what else do we want to see against the Earthshaker? Oh, profit! Oh. This is a hero. Profit? We watched one game and we were not impressed with it at all. We know what it can do, right? It is a very good lane bullier. You can split push. You can do stuff. But we didn't really see any about uh, the, no. the last day. It was a five natures proper, right, or four, and we just didn't feel that much. I mean, who's playing at this? At this what is it going to be a support prophet and support mag, or is this going to be a like which hero is Yang playing? Is okay. this a Yang mag or a Yang prophet or neither? 
It's got to be one of them, right? Dude, I love Yang's Prophet is he, one of the best, but I don't yeah. think so, right? I well, maybe if they want to end the game quickly, then something like a Yang Prophet could be a bit of a key to it. It's a fast Orchid hero, uh, which I'm not opposed to. Yeah, I would like it more than a 3 mag. I think we all, uh, at least I know, I don't know if you guys agree, 3 mag, we, that's what we've seen it the most of, but we're still, yeah. you know, if you you got to get those ores to be impactful, it feels like, and then you're just throwing Ws. You do. You need an offlaner that is able to play like mostly by himself when you have this Magnus support because he's just not very impactful in lane. Yeah. Hey, the Witch Doctor who's uh, come back. Yes, yeah, seen some play. The uh, Voodoo Restoration Witch Doctor, the Chen Light. Yeah. Oh, very, very nice. With right when stun. when you have like this safe laner that needs to be protected, like like the Morphling. You know, you're going to be able to shift flow, get a lot of value out of the Voodoo Restoration heal and. And it is, it is just this, it, this support that's going to make sure that Gabby doesn't, doesn't end up feeding, dying, getting caught out low in the laning stage, which, which I really like. Grimstroke. Grimstroke mag. So maybe that gives a little bit more credence to 3 mag. I think so. Grimstroke mag is, a, a, is like a much better duo. You like that so lane. maybe it is going to be 5 Nature's Prophet. Or do you think you don't think it'll be the Grimstroke paired with the PA? Kind oh, of like yeah, a you're lich, right. You're right. It is probably going to be. And I don't like Grimstroke as a five, but uh, uh, yeah, I mean with PA, you're right. I mean, it That's doesn't have better. to. It could just be the four and they switch lanes, right? I think because we've seen Flying Crit kind of do the same where oh. Crit will play the Grimstroke, but he plays it safe lane and stuff like that. Yeah. But then you have to be less greedy, obviously. That's a that's a cool pickup because even if uh, like Mag Core or Nature's Prophet Core, even though Nature's Prophet is in a strength hero, Timberstar is still really good against him. Yeah. But yeah, we, whichever lane this Timber's in, he's going to have a good lane matchup. And you're just looking to get that Timber saw, like his his peak of strength is that 15, 20 minutes, you know, like that's where all Timbers get like almost suicidal and how aggressive they're playing and eventually they overextend and die. Well, that's kind of fine here because at the end of the day, you're going to have this Earthshaker Morph who's, you know, just looking to come online. So Timber saw is going to try and be a, a good space creator and a good hero to stand in front of towers for you. See Vici, they're going to take out that Ember. Any face, fast-paced hero that can kind of, you know, make you ignore that Morphling Earth Shaker you want to get out of the pool that can play by itself. Because you know, right? Any team that picks Morph Earth Shaker, you know, as long as they're not losing the lanes horribly, they're not feeling too bad, I'm sure. But it is a very fast-paced lineup already from Vici Gaming, so we'll see what TNC wants to take out of here. <coughs> Probably not a Juggernaut. What middle kind of stands out to you for Vici Gaming? I know they have overall last pick, so maybe we do need to obviously see TNCs first, but is there anything that mixes uh, well with the Grimstroke? So I, I was going to say OD because I think Timbersaw yeah. and Morphling are both very exposed to that hero. Yeah. But if it's not Morphling, is it going to be a hero that is empowered? That's true. I, I'm not sure you can really fit that into your lineup. I think maybe like a Storm Spirit or something. It's just too good. And then it's just your PA. Now the mag doesn't have to decide where to go. I'm just going to sit behind one hero. Uh, Zeus might not be bad. Okay. Oh. Uh, maybe never mind on that with a Viper pickup. Okay. Yeah, Viper does make PA's life uh, a Living big old hell. misery. Even with BKB, right? Yes, to the Viper strike. BKB, he just hits you with it. And because there's no it, Leonor it, or Puck, it, right? Uh, well, this is a nice thing as well, right? You don't have that overall last pick, so you pick a mid that's probably going to have it like there's not really many heroes that go oh well gg viper's going to have a hard lane matchup you know what i mean it's you feel happy picking that not knowing what the matchup is okay. tiny oh tiny. we are going to see what who picks what on the radiant side we can kind of always big on the the burst damage i don't know how that mid matchup goes against viper i'm sure it hurts and you are going to be against the timber saw but it can go kind of both ways against the timber saw right you've yeah. got such heavy amount of burst damage Nobody from Vici Gaming is going to be providing you a break mechanic, which is something that Viper might have actually been quite good for himself. Yeah, for Vici. Uh, it's so it, it can be good against Timber Saw. It's good against Morphling, but the lanes are going to be really important here. Yeah, because yeah, th that's the thing, right? I think TNC again, like why they had success with the the Earthshaker Morph early, like it's an Earthshaker Morph lineup. 
but I'm not worried about their lanes getting rolled over. I think they've got pretty good lanes. They're going to be able to get decent matchups. I, it's not going to be a repeat of yesterday's TNC VG, where TNC did this for the first time against Fiji uh, and got sort of rolled over from minute one. Like there, there is going to be that time to build things up, but I think that's going to make a very entertaining game because, of course, VG, they're going to have those great late game combos as well. You are going to have this PA empowered up. The, this, the sort of the help with the soulbind daggers being thrown everywhere. These big, daggers. scary yeah. crits. You know, you have to be smart as Gabby. If you get caught a little too low on one crit, could knock you off the game. So, it's. I hope it's going to go late. I do think you know TNC. They're bringing out Earthshaker Morph. Uh, it's what we said. You know, they learned from the performance before against mm -hmm. Fiji, where they struggled. They are going to have made adaptations here, which you can already see. The lanes look stronger. They're not going to get rolled over in the first ten minutes. So I think TNC yeah. is going to give a bit of a masterclass in how you can take such a, uh, a crushing loss and then Revenge. still open the same way, make changes, and get a, get a better result with it. That being said, there's no uh, playmaker outside of Armel's Viper, and VG Gaming is not necessarily pushed for time because mag pa i feel like it you can scales. almost always win the lineup right scale. you just get yeah. the right kind of jump you're always going to feel good so um i think a lot of this uh, most of the series most of this tournament comes down to laning phase kp is going to have a good matchup i think no matter what tim's is going to have more of a free game as a result you know you get that level three timber sauce so tim's he can go go in and help gabby out he can rotate around uh okay. yeah. And I, I'm just, I am worried about the P, like the PA, it gets, it, you, you can't emphasize how much, how much it gets destroyed by Viper. Like anytime she is not going to BKB, yeah. this P, it does nothing. You've got no crit, you've got no, uh, no evasion, you are useless. You can only fight with the BKB up. If Viper's there, you're useless. So oh. we'll see, we'll see. Yep. We will see, will this PA be countered or can VG Gaming bring it back and take it to a 1-1? We'll have to see as we go over to Lyrical and Trent. Thank you so much again, Grant. And oh my goodness, Vici, they got a little bit of time. They got to shake out all the nerves, rub yeah. off the last game. How are you feeling about this one? They're they're falling back. They're regressing uh, to the C tier of the Magnus, <laughs> I believe. They're, they're pulling back from some of these new TNC strats as uh, our game gets started here. Uh, and they, they've gone back to something a little bit more standard in the Mag, the PA. Uh, it won't be the Yang. Meg, as uh, the panel was discussing, it's going to be that support Meg from PYW and Yang on this Nature's Prophet already starting with the Blightstone to increase the damage from himself and his Treants and uh, try and get some bullying on this lane. You gotta imagine musical lanes likely to occur here as they probably try and get KP matched up versus that Nature's Prophet. Well, and in a lot of ways you say, all right, great. It's no longer gonna be the three Mags, which have looked just god awful this tournament at various points, but the thing that kind of does suck about it a little bit for the Vici Gaming Squad is that now you've got PYW playing a Magnus. And this has been one of their standout performers throughout the whole tournament and not going to be on one of the more flashy heroes this time. We'll see what he can get done oh, with no. it, See, I disagree. I think oh, yeah? position four Magnus can be the absolute flashiest because someone's yeah, handing you point. a bag of trash <laughs> and somehow you make kills happen. All right. Like position four Mag making that skewer play or getting someone clipped is such an impressive thing. Uh, because as as your point, you're basically a skewer or a uh, an empower bot, right? That's all you do. Like, look, this is the high skill plays from the support Magnus. Yeah, what this if he is just kind of the all tree, you though. can do? <laughs> March is just gonna take a bit of a beating here. Nice start, at least with the three armor and 63 base damage on the Magnus is already Ori trying to mess up the CSing a little bit from RML, if at all possible. Four and two, the early goings and messing around a little bit with that Viper. Uh, but yeah, the panel talked about it a lot. It's this this PA who needs to get super duper farm on paparazzi, and Yuris definitely somebody that's been able to do it a time and a few. Yeah, and the uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys have probably all been in the game before, right? Where this someone on your team picks PA and someone tries the Viper. They go for the Nether Toxin break, and you think, wow, this game should be easy. But if the Viper has a bad start, which can occasionally happen if those first Atos rotations don't go well, because we see a, a skewer that looks going very well. Wow. Because uh, that's the level one timber. And uh, you want to kill him as much as you can before he hits level three. And that's what you're talking about. The bag of trash. PYW makes it happen. <laughs> Beautiful show. Toss back underneath the tower for the moment. Armel going to take a lot of damage here. Ori getting the pressure on and doesn't have any more mana or ability to chase forward for this one. So Armel is just going to salve in his face. And already Vici off to a much better start in this game number two. Yeah, or he does have another Mago here too, and Tiny, this hero that it 
it almost feels like he can win like any lane at, in the first two waves. Like sometimes he just finds this combo where he just like that gets a toss back onto the tower and gets such an edge there. <laughs> oh, nice play there by Yang. Just gonna TP out as the fissure expires and can come back quickly into this lane afterwards since he does have teleportation up. UIW, not able to get any skewer magic there. Yeah, that's a hard one to get. Uh, again, just this 1v3. This this is a little bit of a bad news situation where you, when you can't get that kill, right? When you're committing so much, because now he is going to be level 3. The second point in the reactive armor, and KP probably gets just like, grab jungle creeps, grab a wave, get those stacks going. Oh, and good job here by March to just throw out the coconuts. He takes away that pull that was coming out from the trance, so... They aren't going to be able to get any type of pull off. It does look like that wave is somewhat doubled up, uh, so it is going to push out a little bit. So that's a little bit of solace there for you. Yeah, support arrives. Apparently, Armel just has all the voice lines. Yeah, and uh, the uh, the idea of like um, this like KP getting a good lane, uh, we we instead go back to the situation where like they could if they wanted to match though KP has this really good lane versus the Nature's Prophet, but once again TNC. Uh, they, they know that the whole strat of the Morphling Shaker is the Morphling, uh, and it's making sure that Gabby has the best possible game. So although this means that Yuris will have a good start too, uh, Gabby's going to be able to, uh, I mean, it's a single hero in his lane. Like, Morphling's going to have an absolutely fantastic time. He should have complete free farm here. Definitely what you want to have on that hero and get towards those earlier items, even if it's just the survivability portion of it. I will say in a best of five, you have a little bit more room to be giving the opposing team the Morphlane or Shaker and say, deal with it. Uh, and if you win this game as TNC, you're going to be feeling very good about the state of the best of five, obviously, not just because, you know, you're up two games, but also they haven't been able to show that they can deal with this strategy, really. One thing is that um, I think we're starting to see a pattern here in how March drafts uh, and the options he gives to his support players in the first, like, 12 minutes because... In a lot of our current meta games, we have uh, supports that are essentially locked in lane for the first 10 minutes. There's not a whole lot of rotations happening, but in every TNC draft, it feels like we're getting this Venomancer, or in this case, this Timbersaw, even the Viper to a degree in the mid lane where one hero can't handle it on their own. And so they're creating uh, a situation where their opponents have to bring more numbers just to stabilize the lane. So sure, PA is farming, but KP is still getting stuff done. And that's going to open up a lot of possibilities for the supports to rotate and, and not for kills, though. Like, I'm expecting to see TNC start looking for these stacks and start going in and, and warding and de-warding to make sure that VG don't get that time for that stack. Uh, and by the same metric, the fact that these supports have to help out so much in lane means they're also not stacking right now. Yeah, and then you did see that there is the rotation over from PYW trying to stack up the Ancients once he missed it. Uh, a little bit of a mistiming there by the Magnus as Tim's tries to go for the Fissure block off. This should secure the rune as long as it doesn't get denied. Maybe skewer over the top. He thought about it. DYW not going to get it. So two apiece. Yeah, and DY in the back lines takes that bounty rune and gets a ward down. And now he probably wants to head to his own triangle and maybe, again, try and get some sacks going for the team. Uh, or maybe even in the southern jungle. But he needs to uh, find a way to boost the economy of his PA and his tiny right now. Definitely. Much needed and a huge part of the game plan for this Vici roster. Is KP going to build up some of those reactive armor stacks with the catapult coming in? Looks like it might be about his time to get a little bit aggressive. Three points in that reactive armor. And already leading the way. And there isn't really any rotations over. This is uh, a really common move that we see by Timber Saws, and it's pretty hard to deal with. Yeah, kind of though, Tim's feels a little lost. He's just been like wandering around the river. Um, you see that Armel's gone to farm the neutrals uh, in the jungle, but there weren't any stacks for him. So at least he clears up all three camps, and we'll get the respawn very nicely done by Armel. So he basically just made all his own stacks. And uh, Tim's will secure the haste rune. Now he gets the lane creeps. This is something that he does need a little bit of time for himself. Don't really want to be level two at this point on a uh, four shaker. No. The unfortunate part here was that KP didn't get that catapult into range that quickly. So it's just now starting to hit the tier one tower on the bottom lane. As Yuris can't really do anything except for just try and blast it under this. But KP does have Chakram right now. If Yuris isn't careful, this is where things get a little bit dicey. Not quite enough mana to spam it all out. So yeah, as Yuris uses the salve, that should be the end of the chance for aggression from KP. And DY actually pulled so that KP's going to start losing stacks, maybe? And he still has all the tower aggro, though. And this, this just doesn't look like it's working yet. With Ori rotating in, though, that's going to be enough to get the kill. And in 
the meantime, PYW going to try and build up some more stacks over here to the side. Does he get it this time? Looks like he will. Gets his timing right. And looking up for Vici. Yeah, perfect rotation there from Ori. Just what you need to help out versus this Timbersaw. And KP should just be forced right back down here. I don't really see any other options for him. Instantly TPs will go right back to pressuring that tower and trying to take away some of this space for Uris slash Paparazzi. And uh, the ulti's there for KP, but he doesn't have the arcane boots yet, so he doesn't have a whole lot of spam to throw out at the moment. Not the easiest thing Only in the world. Only level five here for Yang, Ooh. considering a go, but March is gone for the uh, the heal. Yeah, no Maledict, so I think he's fine. Got brought down very low, but does have the TP out and can come back in the lane quickly afterwards. It's going to be something else that we could watch for, maybe, as if Gabby wanted to make a aggressive play onto him and then you know oh. switch over to the nation. Oh, PYW has the skewer to get there in time. I love it. Oh, dude, he made it. I like how much he tanks for this, too. Ugh. It's well worth while. Wow. Oh, very much so. I mean, if he can also get into some items afterwards, like that's a nice chunk of gold. Oh, and you know he's going to be leeching. You Absolutely. know, he's going to be hanging out for some XP from this, but. Uh, yeah, March again, not having the uh, the Maledict, so they couldn't get the kill. But one thing is that it is a flat number of heal um, for the Witch Doctor. It's not a percent-based one. So it means that uh, when the morph morphs down really low, even a single point in the Witch Doctor heal is super valuable. That's nice. Uh, you can see a good job there by Yang, summoning some trees and then forcing those creeps away from the tower. That's a huge portion of the damage that the Timbersaw can do to the tower. Otherwise, he's just punching it with his right clicks, which is not that great. But Creep Wave's going to come back in again, and... They might have to drag it off a second time. Yeah, no trance here, though, so I, I don't know if Yang can uh, really get there. Yeah. Well, it does look like he could go for the resummon again if he wants to. <laughs> I think Yang needs to back. drive him back. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying. He's trying real hard. Yang gets body blocked by his own trees, actually. And this side, DY is going to go down. Yang needs to be careful. Man, oh, he got to get the denied, the denied. Does he pay for it? Yes, he will. But you take that one. The, uh, the mental victory. There you go. Right there. Unfortunately, it wasn't a victory in the mid lane either, though, as you said, DY killed there. And I think Tim's got in on that, too. So he's going to get. Uh, he's got Soul Ring. He's got the boots. Oh, yeah. He got the kill as well. Excellent. So Very good for your time. shaker. That was before Echo Slam, also. Yes, right. now. It's time. The blur in action. This is what you like to see. And this is one thing about the Mag PA compared to the other combos that we probably don't talk about enough is that like she can do the Ancients extremely early with no real concern, right? Sometimes you have a Jug, even with Healing Ward, he can't tank a stack like this. He might need like some beef here to do it. And Yuris, uh, oh, those little guys. You got to get the Prowlers, though. He doesn't want to leave it because we'll all just heal back up. Yeah, that's really frustrating. So he will get through all of them, though. It looks like here it does end up running away afterwards. Doesn't look like it's going to get the stack as Bounty Runes TNC so far go in their favor. Armel shows up also. And PA building on the lead that she has, but it's got to be said, she's not that far ahead of the Morph. Morph's had a very free game. Yeah, she uh, got shoved back to the jungle, and uh, that didn't end up happening for Gabby, so her uh, stacks are essentially just keeping her in line with Gabby. She should start to accelerate past him pretty soon, though. And we'll clear out the rest of the Ancient stack. And uh, we didn't see TNC get that mobility into the Radiant Triangle. They've been able to protect this and keep those stacks very safe for Eurus. They, they don't have incredible heroes for contesting, especially because Armel went for the Veil and not the Atos. So it's, it's pretty hard to just like go in there and stack one to pick offs. Throw out the Maledict there, but Eurus not going to be under too much fire. Tim's get sprouted. Need to be careful. The TP rotation coming in from KP. Tim's Fissure connects. On the other side of it, Ori going to try and go for the toss away play as well as the kill. Not going to happen as Ori and Yang both go down. Vici overextending mid. Yeah, heavy punish there for Vici. Like, sure, you're making some space, but probably a little bit too hard there. And Armel, he, he wants to give this cat a little bit of time in the mid lane. He's just tanking the tower for a little bit and says, all right, that's enough. I, I can't do this for you any longer. Same thing for up top with Gabby, though. They're going to pop the glyph here, oh, keep yeah, the tower alive. Kept the catapult up. So they're pressuring both of these tier one towers with the creep wave that's come in. Does look like the TP in from Ori might put the kibosh onto all of that as they pull this wave back the other direction. 
So it's kind of feeling a little bit strange as far as this game goes. Like TNC up 3,000 gold, but it doesn't really feel like either team wants to be that aggressive. Like KP is the most aggressive hero in the game, but it's like waiting for Morph Shaker, waiting for PA Mag to come online. And besides that, everybody's just kind of chilling. Yeah, they, they both have a specific timing, right? PA wants the probably Deso plus one item. Doesn't necessarily want to go for anything too crazy with Deso. Maybe a, a really quick smoke pickoff or something, but uh, nothing <laughs> very wild. Yang just keeps coming back in for the punishment, and that's the TP away. He is slowing down KP now. This is one of those questions you have with uh, Timbersaw sometimes is, uh, like, when do I move? Like, right. should KP be pressuring this tier 2 tower, or should he be mid looking for this fight? Oh, it comes out. Ori is there. Still the death ward going. Avalanche going to interrupt, and then the toss finds the kill onto Witch Doctor. While that's all happening, you've still got TNC out farming Vichy Gaming. Yeah, three cores uh, farming at the moment. Gabby top. He had RML hitting some neutrals. And then, of course, KP very visibly underneath your tier 2 tower, still in the bottom lane. So as long as you only lose one support, that's probably still advantageous for TNC, as you said. But uh, you, you don't really want to feed away too many of those. I want to see what this Timber's building damage is at the end of the game, because he is just punching away here. And it kind of feels like he can keep doing this almost all game long. Like. I don't really know what you have on Vichy Gaming's side with the exception of Ori that, that helps to solve this problem. It, it's a bit tougher now because now there's going to be raw numbers. Like when you go into this yeah. mid-tier 1 and tier 2, there's just so many places to the TP that uh, the cooldowns are super short. You just have like two heroes appear instantly, then you assume one's already there. So it can become a three-on-one in the blink of an eye. And even then, uh, no matter how farmed you are on KP, that can turn into a bit of an issue. Wow, RML, the... Veil and bots already. We've talked about PA and Magnus, but geez, he is very farmed as well. He's right up there with them. They're owning. And it's looking so far quite good for TNC. The lead continues to grow. And every time KP comes to a lane, people just have to back off because it really doesn't feel like this PA wants to get involved anytime soon. He's very good about keeping the stacks constantly maxed as well. They're smoking up top, though, going for the kill. On to Gabby, and with the stun, chained wow. up there from the Inkswell. Great play with the blink reveal on Ori. They needed that desperately. By far the most important kill on the map yeah, for definitely. them to grab. And, you know, that's one of the strengths of this lineup is that you've got that Wrath of Nature as well that can help secure those kills. Deso now done for the PA. She is going to show up for a moment. PYW has the RP, pulls him back in. The skewer as well. Chakra pretty far away. The chains, it's going to be interrupted, but the fissure to interrupt the follow up stunts. The silence out on to KP. And also, we didn't really mention, but Grimstroke, very annoying for the Timbersaw to play against. But they won't be able to kill him. That, uh, after feeling very good before, that didn't feel that great. But they didn't have the Nature's Wrath, uh, so, or the Wrath of Nature, I suppose. But uh, not quite enough damage there. Bring down KP. Well, so you're farming up those Viper Illusions. Gonna head push out top lane. And slowly and steadily, we're seeing TNC just give Vici Gaming a hug across the map, pressuring in where they're capable of going. QAW sees that that room is gone. Fissure's going to connect. Interrupt Witch Doctor Ultimate. Not going to be able to do that much more. But KP's here too. And Armel was so committed to this passive game, going for the, uh, <laughs> the veil of the bots. Like, yeah. he, he has no plans on this like three-man smoke that we always see from Vipers at 12 minutes, and they just run around Atos and kill someone. He's just like, yeah, I know what my Morph's doing. I know what my Timber's doing. I would like to do that too, please, and thank you. It's worked out fantastic for him so far. Like he's 102, but he's got 150 last hits on a Vi 151 on a Viper. That's really good. He's top of the charts. He's been killing it. Another toxin. It's a hell of a drug. Tim's has his blink dagger. I think that they're going to get that D ward most likely in the Radiant Ancient camp, as they did place down a sentry, but nobody's passed by it recently. Good, good call by Tim's. Runs into a grim stroke instead of trying to like calm him down, go for a kill. He says, "You know what? There's, there's probably more than just this guy here." And doesn't want to draw them into a fight right next to Gabby either. Not going to be worth it. Gabby now uh, wandering around at a, a bit higher HP values than he was before that last gank. And, well, uh, well as I say <laughs> that, he morphs all the way down. So uh, that crazy. is because Ori's showing on a catapult bottom, though. Okay. So that, that's acceptable. Understandable. So, yeah, it's... Uh, oh, again. he's under a ward right now, though. He's got to be careful. Ori's not going to go at for it. At 480 HP. Wow. I'm surprised. 
He very much respects Gabby. And instead, they're going to shadow the PA up top. They want to take this tower because their tower uh, bottom is already gone. So they're just saying, like, there's nothing for uh, Gabby to gain down there. Let's try and force this. They do reveal with the dagger. And Katie says, all right, who's back here? Cuts the trees. Just starts chasing. And smoke gets popped on all four. That's pretty sick. He does need to be a little bit careful because his stacks are wearing off, but it doesn't look like Vici are going to try and go for anything. So yeah, his stacks are down, but KP not going to get punished at all by that one. Keeps the tower alive. Vici, every move they make is being thwarted so far. And all they could do is uh, like force this TP out of the timber and then try and say, okay, let's fight somewhere else. Right. We know he can't TP now. And by popping the smoke just like that. They weren't sure if they were under war coverage or not in the mid lane, and while well, KP just immediately makes his way back here anyway. So playing the uh, the Vanguard, as we like to have, where he just always puts himself between the enemy team and the more important cores on his team. That's what you need to do with this hero. And now he's just going bot. He's like, all right, I think they left, guys. There's like nothing down here for TNC either. It's like all the towers are gone. They're just... Wanting to find some kills. They're bloodthirsty. VG aren't exactly sure what's going on. They did just scan the Roche pit. So a bit confused as to the whereabouts of some of these TNC heroes. They're going to TP in with Yang, but immediately Armel shows himself in this lane, and well, now the push has stopped. You can't really do all that much here. TNC are giving them nothing. No tower. No objectives. Four step forward, though. They find themselves Yang. He's trying to get out of there. Just summon some trees. Well, you get the amp damage out from the timber. Uh, only makes oh, it worse. Oh, now the echo mid lane. Fissure also going to connect. The maledict damage trying to TP away. That's not going to work, my dude, as he gets pummeled. TNC came to play on Grand Finals Day. PYW trying to find oh, a way out God, of here. What are you doing, my man? They take him down as well. Just one by one, they're running in and dying. They need this BKB and they need it now. TNC fully aware that VG can't commit for a fight at this point. Everyone oh, just way too weak. A setup, a setup, looking for it. Silence there, but the switch over and Gabby's just away. They're not going to get him. The other thing to keep our eyes on, Morphling just got his Aghanim Scepter. He's about to get that level 15 talent. Obviously becomes all the more strong when he gets to the uh, 18, you have that permanent uptime, but it's still scary. And you know, the other thing that's really scary about Enchant Totem, True Strike. It's a really hard game for a PA. <laughs> it's, uh, again, just, it's all about the BKB. And yours is close. I mean, he's chucking daggers mid. He's doing whatever he can to get the gold onto his hero. Oh, DY. They want to find him. Stun away. The Fisher is out. And well, DY is likely to go down here as he does not have a TP away. Man, it has just gone from bad to worse to terrible for and, Vici Gaming. Uh, look, look at that uh, Radiant Triangle. You see there's a sentry blocking the Ancient spawn. Ugh. As uh, Yuris is coming up trying to find some creeps. And uh, they will get the bounties, though, and that must be getting close. And there it is. So the VKB is on its way. It is delivered, in fact, and now the Bash are queued up next. So. VG, what do you do now? Do you stop the bleeding, or is there something else you need to wait for? They're very close to the Echo Saber on Ori. I would not mind waiting for that. And it looks like he's going to chuck it in mid, because he understands the importance of that there, too. DD picked up for Gabby, though. The perfect timing for them. They've got Blink Echo back up in 20 seconds. As Are they just going to run into the pit right now? Oh, that's kind of sneaky. I like that. Oh, oh nope. They're going to go for the fight. Armel brought down somewhat low. Fissure's going to come out. Already the battle BKB. is a Bruin and in some trouble. BKB not coming out yet from Yuris. He's going to pop it now. Tries to turn on the Tims, who is going to get brought down. Have they gone a bit too far on TNC? Not really too sure about that one as KP runs into it also, trying to find the secondary pickoff. There's not Aldo. bad. They also have Spirit Vessel. They just kill off the PA, though. They don't have a chance. Meanwhile, the chase down coming from Gabby as he finds PYW, gets the ultra kill. PA was killing the supports. Gabby was killing the heroes. And now he's going for the big man, Mr. Roche. TNC are just destroying Beachy. And, uh, well, if you'd like to see it again while they do Roche, uh, we have that for you. As uh, they uh, they try and go on RML first, which makes sense, right? Because we know this Viper is so crucial for shutting down the PA. 
She comes down, she goes in BKB, she immediately targets Tim's. But uh, maybe trying to think about like the Morph Shaker combo, right? Oh. But then Gabby just playing on the outskirts of the fight, jumping in, jumping out, and then Yuris is just on the run with the BKB. He goes back in for March, but now he's just evaporates. Yeah, and that DD Morph Lane, the timing of it to spawn right when they're going in, it just it didn't stand a chance. Oh, this is uh, one of the most like demotivated feelings in a game where you know you kind of have this window and everyone gets amped up and you're like ready to smoke and you just get blown up by the opposition and it, it starts to feel a little bit hopeless here. Especially with them, of course, clearing up that age, just putting it on to Gabby. So that's going to be uh, another four and a half minutes here where VG, if they want to fight, they're going to have to try and find someone like Armel off alone. Uh, but Armel, he's playing it safe. He, he's gone for a Ghost Scepter for himself. Uh, potential uh, Eve Blade later, I'm sure, but uh, for now he's just using it defensively to protect himself from the Phantom Assassin. Make sure that he's always going to have that Nether Toxin to help with the break. And even thinking about a uh, an Agnum Scepter to ensure that he's always going to have the Viper Strike too to truly ruin Eurus's time. It's so much about that PA being able to stay on targets. If you've got that lockdown, you know, slow though it may be, through BKB, it is painful indeed. Melt. Okay. Like, that was without veil. They found Armel. Guys, they're here. Do you want to party? Do you want to battle? He's got Yules. Yang? Oh, just barely off the mark. And now they're kind of getting wrapped on, though. They need to be careful. Morphling is behind enemy lines. And he is already into the form they're of the running Earthshaker. running to the dire jungle for safety. Oh, God. The chase forward. They just blow up Yang. And now looking for a bit more. BKB popped out there. Morphling is just going to enchant Totem the other direction. There's a dieback, right? So at least yeah. there's that. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't look like they can take a fight. I mean, this could potentially be kind of a moment again because the Earthshaker's gone, but at the same time, you know, you still got Aegis Morphling. Yeah. If anything, it would maybe be a situation where you could try and use the RP uh, to go for a kill onto Armel, but it's a Viper. Hey, he's so hard to bring oh, down. God. And they find Ori up on the high ground. Uh, use the Adaptive Strike, not the Strength one. Okay. I think he almost like lost vision or something there. I'm not sure. Like a tree regrew or something? Very bizarre. Well, 24 minutes in. The head shake happens, but honestly, I think that they're still fine at this point. You can see that while Earthshaker's dead, even switching over into the timber saw, it's not like it's that bad of a look. That's our, that's our new plan, is it? <laughs> yeah, right? It's the next thing to be broken. Well, uh, Paparazzi slash Yuris, he, uh, he's got the plan. Eggs, Rapier. We, we actually saw this several times. I think it was from uh, a couple of the Chinese teams doing this build. Yeah. Uh, in games that weren't this desperate. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Fissure. They marked the spot. Double X is on him. Oh, God. Try and run away. Where's this man going to go? Oh, no. Now the Viper. The rest of them are coming in. Yuris just wants to live. He wants to be a hero. Wants to be a player. The chase for oh, OK. Marsh, preemptive tip. Leash there onto two. Maybe a little bit too cavalier with their movements. And Yuris able to escape. Meanwhile, KP is uh, messing around with Ori here under the tier two tower. Now well, they find themselves another kill down on the south. Kills all over the freaking map. As now Ori's in trouble. They get him caught there with the enchant totem. Double kill for Gavi. This combo is too good. Witch Doctor ultimate on the other side. March just brazenly going to beat down into Yang. Does he die in the fountain? Doesn't look like it. He's just got all that regen coming in for him. Oh, Picks man. Up the hood just in case. Make me wondering if you even need to skip the Ags for the moment for that PA. Like, things are looking real rough. Oh, God. Danger, danger. Chase down, PYW, Fissure, the Enchant Totem comes through afterwards, and Gabby is godlike. They just can't stop it. 11,000 lead, but they're already hitting forward onto these Tier 3 towers. VG Gaming can't believe it. They have only lost three games so far at this Major before this series, and it's looking like they're well on their way to the fifth. As TNC just looked unstoppable. Yeah, you got to respect the team willing to go right back to this Morph Shaker after uh, losing with it versus this very squad in a rather dramatic fashion. They learned from their mistakes, apparently, as TNC take the first lane of Rax, already not able to get in range for a tossback. 
and Beachy just clutching at straws right now as they hope to find some footing. Is the solution just win before Morph does anything anyway? Because that's a pretty good strategy. <laughs> seems like it. It seems to work really well when you just win the other two lanes. I guess easier said than done. As, yeah, he's foregone the heck. He's just like, guys, we just need this rapier. Get me online. Let me hit some heroes. Well, the uh, the window is is growing thinner and closing in terms of his BKB down to seven seconds. And we uh, have all discussed how that is the only way he can fight through this Viper. And what can his team do to protect him? They can throw on these ink swells to try and stun around. Oh, and it looked like they wanted to set up there with that ink swell, but not able to get in range quickly enough. And now Beach just need to evacuate it. Yeah, DY just gets demolished. The chase down, they got Yuris there. Gonna try and BKB TP out. Do they have enough damage to burst through him in time? Not quite. If they had one more enchant totem there, they might have been able to. But PYW, he might not be so lucky. This Gabby is just demolishing faces. Devastating. Ah. Uh. Well, uh, can I just be speechless? I, mean, I, I think that that's part the, of the state job. that we're we at. Good? It's just <laughs> like, yay, Rapier. Like, when that's your game plan. Right. It's, uh, it's what, like, what has happened to VG today? I don't know. They didn't eat their Wheaties. That's for sure. You will set their lift up at the last second there as Yang is going to be abandoned by his team and killed off before he can get back to the fountain. Well, let's discuss when BG has looked very strong. Okay. Uh, PYW, as you kind of pointed out, this game has been able to make very good plays. Yes, the guy's been super active, getting around the map, making clutch stuff happen for the squad. Can't really do that on position four mag. No. We, we got that. Can't really impact the laning stage on position four mag. Did a great job stacking. Thumbs up, gold stare on plus. that one. Yep. Uh, we got uh, PA. The PA lane was relatively okay. Uh, unfortunately, with the Timber Saw, she did get shoved into the jungle before the Morphling did. So uh, they did lose out in terms of that trade. Oh no, the ping. Ori didn't have a great start. No. It, it just has all felt like they've just been bewildered by this combination. And it's crazy because this is what they picked just the other day against them, and Vici looked like they had all the answers in the world. And this time around. They have just not been able to come up with anything. They even look broken. I feel like they've had a lot of void in Night Stalker lately. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, they've had a lot of void in Night Stalker. And, and this game, we are just, uh, we're kind of on the, the no train on those guys, I believe. Um, Both being banned in the first phase. They're getting closer to Rapier, but it's just, it's feeling like a pipe dream. So they need an answer. And, well, Timbersoft comes in immediately just Bellowing into Yang. He does have the Yules yet again on KP. Waiting for everybody to get there in time. March is there with the stun afterwards. And this one is feeling close to Dawn. Man, this is just... Oh, God. Oh, no, Gabby. They jump in. They find the stun yet again. They don't have an answer in the world with RP. Trying to save it. Can they turn it? Oh, Yuris, he wants Whoa. to do it. And they make it happen. The BKB savior. Is it going to be enough, though? He's broken. He's on nothing. And eventually, he's going to be brought down. Gabby, a bit too strong as they chase forward for a bit more. Gabby, beyond godlike at this point, as even in the face of a miracle, he just laughs and turns back into Earthshaker. And KP there as well to hold his hand. Oh man, imagine if Yuris didn't have like 15% HP <laughs> when he started being able to right click there. But uh, Tim's tried to bring him down right away and uh, you know the damage was done at that point. He was getting so close to that rapier too. God, imagine if he had it. I, I think he's gonna get a rapier fight, guys. Okay. It looks like it's gonna happen at this rate. Oh, another Yule Scepter lift up and it does look like TNC has something to say about that. He's just trying to TP out underneath his tier four towers. My man is struggling. As we are 31 minutes into this game and it does not feel like KP cares about a damn thing. He is low on mana, but just punching Treants. Yeah, I can tell he's a little disappointed that he's playing a hero with no taunt though. Because like That's all true. of last game he taunted. He doesn't have enough hero voice lines either. Oh, and Yang, he's also gonna get eaten up, gobbled down. 
by Gabby, who is going to get tossed back into the fountain. The skewer back doing everything and a bit more, but double health bars are a bit too strong. They're leashed, they're stunned, the Yule Scepter lift up, and then the easy peasy walk away. BKB to get back to your base, because that's the way this game has gone for Vici Gaming. My god. I mean, it's kind of like crazy dive sometimes for TNT, but it always feels like there's some coverage behind them, right? Whether it's the uh, the Morphling Fishers or the Earthshaker Fishers, someone's always prepared to bail you out if you go a little bit too deep. And uh, they only got a tier three and all that, I believe. So diving all the way to the fountain. I mean, yeah, it's true. They they didn't get that many more objectives, but they got a hell of a lot of kills in PA. Rapier, rapier. Like in the path. Let's right. see. Just got to get herself over to the, uh, the secret shop. You know, the thing that's so weird about this, too, is like for TNC, all of their drafts where they open Earthshaker Morphling have been about how do we get to this point that they're at right now. Oh, Yang's going to see you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yang's just Yang's getting there. ahead. We're good. We're good. Yang's honesty. It's all good. Yeah, yeah we're fine. We're fine. But it, the thing about it that, to me that just feels so nuts is this draft from VG ensures that you're going to get there, right? Like, DA Magnus, you're just farming, which is exactly what TNC have been looking to do with their entire drafts. We'll have to see how it goes, but right now Yuris has the Rapier, not quite at that level 25 triple dagger talent. Let's see what they can do with it. Just a little bit away. Just there's three levels. <laughs> oh, well, three, you know, 3.1. And I'm giving them the level. There it is. There yeah. it is. They got it. Oh, well, this is a 2700 crit. Now, if they have a way to take away all of the armor. <laughs> <laughs> better, better find out soon because Gabby's in. Oh, God. Wait. He's got E Blade, too. The chase forward, the buybacks come out immediately. They need to make something happen with this rapier. On the other side, KP is there. Yuris is on the trees. trees, and well, he does get the BKB off. Very important for him as he tries to get the walk away, but he just can't fight. The skewer back in, it's not gonna pull him into the fountain, and they blow up Yuris. Buyback comes out for rapier on oh, the deck. It? They got oh, their eyes on the prize. <laughs> oh, Gabby's already got the ultra kill, and he wants that rampage. Give it to him as the chase down comes. No, that's gonna be the Aegis down. Tim's also in a little bit of trouble as he's eventually gonna die but GG is called as TNC just destroyed VG Gaming. What the hell happened? Did they forget how to play Dota? What's going on? I don't know. March is loving it. Oh yeah. Drag oh. it down. <laughs> oh, you I dare to give me more shaker? Do you see this water bottle? <laughs> Thirsty after such victory. Unbelievable. That was a pose and a half. God damn. Somebody tells me the crowd aren't really jamming out to that music because <laughs> they, they rock it with a giant victory for TNC. Oh. The hometown heroes, VG Gaming, they're trying to get uh, the most emotional and dramatic storyline possible for their fans by going down 2-0 here in the grand final of the hometown major. That's what it is. You got to think with the they big They love brain. selling the seats. <laughs> <laughs> got to stay on for longer. Man, I don't know what the hell happened, man. Uh, you know who might know? Who? Let's go back to the panel. Morphling Earthshaker. Well, that's all I got. Oh, hey there, Odie Pixel. <laughs> oh. Hey there, Cap. Uh, hey. Yeah, we just saw this game, and, well, it wasn't just those two heroes, obviously, but, well, you open up with those heroes, you, you show that you can beat earlier, mm -hmm. and, yes, indeed, Fogged was wrong, apparently. Fogged <laughs> was wrong. Apparently, Magnus <laughs> C-tier. I mean, Vici Gaming, maybe they're just making it hard for themselves, yeah. you know? They're here in the grand finals, and they thought to themselves, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go down 0-2 against TNC by picking a C-tier hero. Yeah. You know? And they did. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it just straight up feels like we're, we're in Vici Gaming's house, right? We're in China, and TNC just comes in, and they kind They got a big house. Whoa. They just smashed <laughs> the house. Damn. Oh. The TNC is just, they're just in oh, there. Thank you, Grant. I, oh. I needed a little bit uh, You're of that. welcome. That was like, that, that, you know, the, the house was uh, Eurus' PA and your fist was, <laughs> was Gabby's the, mall. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Bob. Bob. <laughs> Goodbye. No, but really, that yeah. these both these games, let's just say it, they've been very one-sided from like the five-minute mark on. You see this oh, laning yeah. phase, Vici's like, okay, oh. they get a little bit from these lanes, but I mean, not Yang, this game didn't get anything first off. So let's talk about that. Off lane yeah. Nature's Profit. A reason we're not seeing it? No. I mean, you, you know that Bulldog was sort of sat at home watching that game and goes, see, Billy, this is why you don't play yeah. offline nature's prof. You know, <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy learned a good lesson today. Uh, yeah, it wasn't a great game from Yang. Um, but as I say, I think that, that's down to the pick. You, you yep. Don't pick offline nature's prof. Sure, we saw what could 
maybe have been the thought process. They were like, well, we picked this prophet. It's going to be able to skip waves, push objectives. Neither of those really happened uh, because the hero kind of just falls over from sort of the lane to the end of the game. It, it just it doesn't threaten any of the three cores that uh, you have on the side of TNC. And then it just gets to this point of the match when you're like, oh, hang on, I'm a core prophet what against a like a shaker and uh, a second shaker. You, know? Yeah. You, know, you don't want to play prophet against one shaker. Yeah. You definitely don't want to play prophet against two earth shakers that are, are catching you out from a mile off. And yeah. as the, the game went on, just blowing you up in, in one simple touch from the, the magical hands of the water man. Yeah. I don't mind the idea, though. The I think like PA Morphling is not a bad idea against the uh, the morphling right okay. everything between like being able to have the gap close you're an abyssal buyer you have this heavy amount of burst damage that can really um expose a morphling pickup nature's profit was supposed to be able to buy time for me uh, uh, what i thought was like really the game winning pick was the timber saw right? yeah i felt like fourth the pick, timber right, saw you already knew yeah it was fourth pickup eight pick right they already knew both the safe lane as well as the off lane yeah. they knew one of the supports Actually, the new bull supports, Grimshark's good versus time. Timbersaw, yeah. but, you know, you're you're fine if your match. If the other three heroes are good, it's a good Timbersaw game. One right? And time. as a result, he creates so much space. He's able to just bang on that tower. Tiny's forced to come down to bottom lane. Even when he dies, right, it doesn't really matter too much because the amount of time and space that he's created just makes it so that Vici Gaming, they needed a, a really fast spirit vessel out of Yang. To be able yeah. to like shut down this timber saw a little bit easier, and then in turn, right, they wouldn't be losing their tier two. Then they would be able to apply pressure elsewhere. Just you know, and then I think that the viper was actually a very solid pickup. Viper as well. was an amazing pick, yeah. Right, as long as you're able to like force out the PA yeah. to use his BKB early in fights, Morphling is then a lot more free to do whatever he needs to do because he's got this enchant totem that yeah. he can swing through that evasion that the PA has. And especially if she's using her BKB to be able to jump onto somebody else, then great. The Morphling feels fantastic. As soon as the BKB is gone, this PA is done. The fight, yeah. Right? The and fight, that's she's just kind useless. of over. That's what happened the whole, uh, that whole game, right? We saw yeah. three yeah. BKBs used to yeah. kill a support, and then you're just running. No. it's and, and I the, the, the way that they pick that Viper, you pick it in the situation where you don't know the enemy mid as well, because it doesn't really matter. And yeah. I, I'm very happy to sort of TNC showcase how much power the Viper still has like this, because I think a lot of other teams in this tournament would be very quick to sort of write off five and be like, ah, that's terrible hero doesn't yeah. fit into place but games like this when there are heroes so reliant on their passive abilities it just it messes up the whole game for them you saw sure for the most of this match even though Vici were behind there was a lot of farm on the PA like the Eurus had good farm because he had the empower but it just didn't matter it was impossible for Eurus to to sort of take fights on his own accord he was popping the BKBs to either kill like a support like ki trying to kill Tim's or just popping the BKBs to run away from the advantage of heroes like KP. It just makes the game, honestly, it feel impossible for the PA to play. I mean, and this whole match as well, we saw, you know, five minutes in, Gabby was, he was already top net worth. His lane didn't get pressure because they yep. had this very awkward offlane nature's profit that was unable to do much uh, against Gabby because Gabby had that solid support for himself in lane by his side, just keeping him safe. It, w it was an e easy shake and morph game, and it was what we we thought we may see coming into this series, right? We knew that TNC versus Might VG, out, they yeah. couldn't pull it off yesterday. And then, as Cap said, they, they tried it this morning. They dominated with it because they, 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 they believed in it. They knew that they could come in doing, you know, improving on what they'd learned from the previous series yesterday against VG Gaming. And, you know, here we have it. You know, th that's the scary thing about TNC, that their brilliance with the drafts is they'll always improve. If there was something wrong with it, they know what's wrong with it. They'll make the changes and they'll get the very easy wins now. 2-0 and both of these games haven't even been close. One more short note would be that I think that Armel... Uh, may have overplayed both of his matchups in mid so far. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know how the Viper Tiny matchup is supposed to go. Uh, Fogden and I were kind of yeah. talking about maybe Tiny's supposed to have a little bit better CS than he did, but I think Armel maybe overplayed that a bit. But very important that he doesn't lose these sort of matchups and he is able to pressure Ori a lot better yeah. um, because they needed that Tiny to be able to come online very quickly. He had so he much he needed to do in that game, right? And especially yeah. going into this, like, you already feel like you're on a timer against Earthshaker more. You're matched into a Viper as well. You probably don't feel great about going on him in general. Don't know how you feel about the matchup. You've got a Timber Saw you have to deal with who's eventually going to get too tanky for you. He, There was just so much pressure on Ori to, to come online and create space for them, and it just yeah. never really happened.
No, makes a lot of sense. That is the end of game number two. TNC already up 2-0. Will this be the last game of the first major? Can TNC do? Or will Vici Gaming turn it around in game number three? We'll see you soon.